Hi, I'm Mike Casper. I'm the lead instructor and co-founder of MTI DTC, and welcome to another video series we have on TIG welding. Um, TIG is, uh, a lot of guys love it because there's not a lot of sparks. It takes a fair amount of hand-eye coordination and uh, it's very versatile. Um, so let's, let's just start at the basics. All right, so here we go. We got our Miller Maxstar 200. We talked about it in the, the other video series. So it's a very versatile machine, but it's DC only, okay? Um, I, I don't wanna bad mouth any particular welders, but we don't do a lot of AC welding. We do it on the, on the aluminum TIG side, but to buy a, 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 a stick welder on the AC with only AC, probably the cheapest one on the shelf, and it, it doesn't weld very smooth, okay? So this is a DC machine, 200 amps is maximum. Uh, again, it's got a button that says stick or TIG. So we're TIG welding. We're gonna go, uh, we're gonna start TIG welding. You'll notice that my amperage was here with this 7018 that I'm holding. Now we're clear up, we're gonna, we're gonna blow and go at about 135, 140 amps. Again, our digs in the middle. If this button was not here from the factory, it would be set on 50 and it would, it would just, it would run fine. You would never notice the difference. This is to control the penetration. And uh, the next thing is we'll go down to, to our, our ground and our, our lead, okay? So with stick, our, our stinger or our rod is positive and our ground is negative. With TIG, it's the exact opposite. Okay, let me say that again. With TIG, it's the exact opposite. Negative will be our, our TIG rig and positive will be our ground. Negative will be our TIG rig, the lead going to our TIG rig. And I'll show you that when we set back down. And this is the ground clamp, okay? This is called straight polarity. And I'll explain that when I set back down, okay? So our machine is just, we told it we were TIG welding, we turned it up, the dig stays the same and we swap these two. That's all we have to do for TIG welding. Now I say all. TIG also requires some gas. We have 100% argon flowing through our TIG rig. Again, I'll cover that, okay? So, you know, we talked about machine setup, which is pretty, pretty cut and dried. It's just the opposite of our 7018. So let's talk about the equipment that it takes to TIG weld. This is a TIG torch, okay? This assembly right here is the torch. They make them in, the, this is a cup. They make see-through cups. They make all kinds of crazy long cups for certain applications. This is a, ten, uh, a 10. The 10 on this cup means it's 10 millimeters wide. We've got a lot of different cup series that we can use to get into crevices and tight spots and things like that. But this is a TIG torch. Handle right here. Connection, this is a power lead. So the electricity comes up through there, but it's hollow. It's got a, a, a copper, braided line in there that, that conducts the electricity, but the hose is hollow to allow argon to flow up through here. That's this nozzle right here. You turn it on, argon flows out, protects that. We'll talk about that in a second. So the machine, we talked about the setup on it being the exact opposite of our stick. So here's what we got set up right here. This is a power lead. So here's our stinger. This goes to our argon bottle. This is our power lead that goes to our TIG torch and it's hooked directly, stingered up, just like that, it's on the negative side of our welder and the positive sides are ground over here that grounds the table I'm sitting at. So very simple to set up. Uh, so, you know, you got a DC welder, you got TIG capabilities. Uh, so I'll put this on the ground here. So we'll talk about what we got going on here. So we know we got power and we got argon coming to this, okay? So this all threads apart. So this is, this is a ceramic cup. It's actually made of ceramic. They make different styles, but that's a number 10 gas lens cup. This is a gas lens right here, this, this piece right here. Let me unthread it for you. So this is a, an assembly. So we've got a collet, collet body, gas lens. Uh, we call this an insulator. All this is one package. What this does is uh, it's kind of like your faucet or your hoe. You turn your garden hose on outside and there's no aerator or nothing in it. It just comes out. This is kind of like an aerator on your faucet. What it does is it lines up the argon to drop directly on the, uh, on the weld, on the molten metal. So each one of these weld processes, you'll, you'll know or 
understand that there is a, a gas that covers the molten metal to keep it from our atmosphere. Stick welding has the flux. MIG welding has CO2 and argon coming out of it or a plethora of mix. Uh, TIG welding is, is almost exclusively 100% argon. What that does is it keeps the atmosphere from getting into this uh, molten metal. That's all its job is, okay? So in the middle of all this guy is a piece of tungsten. The tungsten melts at a higher temperature than our wire or our base metal. So all this is, is basically like a tiny little torch that heats up a very, very specific area. The area it heats up is a needle point area. So we can, we can, this is a very controlled way to weld. We can weld it on very thin metal, but we're also, we're setting on about 140 amps, so we can weld 3 8 plate with it as well. Very versatile type of welding. So I'm just gonna throw all this back together, threads in there. All right, so I'll, I thread that back together. I put my cup on here. And you'll notice that my tungsten's sticking out, okay? This is a very, very general preference, but I like, no matter what cup I'm using, I like it for the tip to the end to be pretty much what it is from the side to the center. So we got a little triangle going on. It comes out as much as it goes over, okay? So in other words, I don't like to weld like that because the point's too far back and I don't like to weld with it too far forward. So now, what happens? Well, Mr. 70 again, we have 70S wire. This is eighth inch 70S wire. This is exactly the same wire as what's on our MIG weld, okay? It's copper, copper cladded or copper coated to make sure it just kind of eliminates it from rusting. I could actually TIG weld with this 7018, if I got all the flux off of it and took some emery cloth and polished it shiny, I could TIG weld with this. But why do that when they make this? This is TIG wire, okay? 70S, the S means solid. 70 means 70,000 PSI. This is our TIG wire. It's eighth inch in diameter. So what happens with the TIG process, we're gonna turn our argon on. We're gonna set this on the steel. So if you can imagine taking a drum and tipping it on in, and rolling it on in to get it out the doorway, that's what we're talking about. So once we have our arc established, what I'm gonna do is start rolling this cup just like that. See that barrel? And it has a natural forward progression, okay? I'll, I'll have the wire there, I'll be walking that, and I'll be creating a puddle. The tungsten is gonna melt the base metal, and the base metal melts my wire, and I'm gonna make a bead, just like I did in stick, MIG, and I'm gonna go across here. The only difference is we got 135, 40 amps and it's a slow process. I can only go as fast as this will melt. Okay, you say, you say well, turn it up higher. If I turn it up higher, I, I may not be able to keep up with how fast it wants me to go. So I'm kind of limited to how fast I can go versus how fast I want my machine or how high I want my machine set and all that stuff. So anyway, we'll get started. I'll put this on here and boom. All right, so we talked about walking the cup. We talked about coming in like this. I'm, I'm kind of dragging my hose around and stuff, so I'm gonna flip this thing upside down. Still the same process. I'm still rolling that barrel across the floor, okay? So I got my cup setting on the steel. I'm gonna rock that tungsten forward. I'm gonna feel it hit. I'm gonna pull it off the steel about a, you know, our favorite 16 inch uh, or less, and it's gonna create an arc. That arc is gonna create a puddle. The puddle will melt the base metal or the base metal is created by the puddle, and then I'm gonna add the wire, and the wire is gonna mix in with our base metal, and we're gonna make a weld bead, okay? Here we go. All right, so there's our weld bead. It's created by the wire I'm holding and the tungsten. The tungsten doesn't, doesn't it's called a non-consumable, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't burn into the weld. It stays hot, 
and it melts everything, but it, it stays sharp as well. I'll turn our argon off. You notice we got some blue and stuff. That's just the heat coming off the carbon steel. So very, very hot weld, penetrates well. You can use it on thick, thin, whatever. You can weld stainless with it. You can weld aluminum with it. You can do a lot of different things with it. Well, obviously we gotta change our wire. Anytime you change your uh, base metal material, you're gonna have to change your wire you, you, you use and stuff like that. It will weld without walking the cup if you wanna see a demo of that. So I hold it when I don't walk the cup. And there's a lot of times where I can. Um, if I'm welding on the outside corner of something or, or something like that, I can't really get my cup in there to walk it. So walking the cup is primarily a, uh, a, a technique done by pipe welders. Walking the cup is not, is not necessary to make a decent weld or a strong weld. This weld and, and not walking the cup are the same as long as my wire is the same. So I'll show, you, I'll show you that. I hold it like a dental instrument on the back of my hand. And now I'm just gonna articulate myself back and forth. Okay, again, I've got that arc length of 16th or, or narrower. And, and I, go, I go back and forth just to make, this, this is one instance where I do wanna go back and forth to make the ripples in it. Okay, all right, here we go. So we got our, our puddle established. We bring our wire in, our wire melts. All right, so there's that. And you're like, well, that looks just as good as walking the cup. And it does on carbon. Uh, there are some metals around that we TIG weld, uh, such as stainless steel, that it doesn't like heat to start with. So we wanna be able to control that heat. So we wanna, we wanna not stay in one area very long. And when we do stay in that area, we want it to be very, very consistent. So when we, when we TIG weld walking the cup, we're staying in that area I don't want to say exactly the same time, but we are spreading that heat out in a very, very even manner. So that's why we like to show to walk the cup. It's not real prevalent on mild steel plate, but pipe definitely and stainless, stainless pipe for sure. We want to walk that cup. Okay, so we just start off walking the cup. It's just a process or a technique we use. Those two welds are exactly the same strength. They were done on exactly the same heat and they look very similar to each other. When we get into some stainless steels, they, they wouldn't necessarily look the same. I can show you a TIG weld, excuse me, a TIG weld T-joint. Um, it's, it's pretty much the same. It's gonna be set up, so uh, let, me, let me get that set up. That, that's kind of the flat position beads. Um, again, 140 amps, set the cup down, strike an arc, establish that puddle, and go. It's a very slow process. I would say this is probably no more than four inches, you know, four inches per, per uh, minute. And that's, that's not a very fast process. So it has its time and place in the field as well. All right, no sparks, that's an advantage. Um, again, it doesn't like the wind. Wind blows my argon away. We got serious trouble on the job site if, if my argon's blown away and I'm in the middle of a weld. That's a grind out and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, that's our flat. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the T-joint. We might do a little uphill on the T-joint just to kind of show you that, again, once you establish what that puddle's doing and what kind of heat you need, it's just all about you watching it and having your travel speed down. So it's, it's not really rocket science by any means. Any of these methods I've shown you uh, of welding, the MIG, stick and TIG, if I'm watching that puddle, I, I can pretty much, you know, I know when it's bad and I know when it's good. So uh, that concludes kind of the flat walk in the cup version and, the, and the, we call it, if you're not walking the cup, we call that free handing. So that's walk in the cup and uh, free handing um, situation on, on TIG. So again, we're 135, 140 amps. I'm probably gonna bump the heat up a little bit when we bring these two pieces of steel together. Pretty substantial piece of steel right there. So, um, you know, it takes, some, it takes some whammy to get that to stick. All right, uh, thank you, and we'll be back with the T-joint.